I for today's tear down, look what I have here, what is called on eBay the Tornado Reque Control Panel. So it is a big control panel like this with uh, six uh, LCD displays. So obviously I have one uh, broken LCD, it is why I got this item quite cheap. Usually they are over 100 euros but this one was a lot less. I will uh, see if it is possible to swap this uh, LCD in case it is some kind of uh, part I can order, uh, regular stock LCD model I can uh, could order somewhere and uh, swap this one. We will see how it is made inside. So we have six LCD panels probably uh, two lines I believe here probably uh, brightness adjustment push buttons so this one are just logos in a rectangular shape here we have pg1 and 2 we have byte and fail on the other ones i do not remember they say qual and cell and line and cell byte fail pg1 and 2 okay so, uh, and here another one, I did forget this one, which is saying behind a little flap, on. So it is your main on button with a guard over it. So this unit, actually quite impressive construction in all die cast body with built in heat sink. Three big connectors. And it is made by Computing Devices Limited in England. Yes, here you have the name. Oh, it is written on it. Rexy or Rixi or whatever you want to. I believe it is for reconnaissance or something. Control panel. NSN number, serial number. So here are three big connectors. This one seems to be a test connector as it is uh, or program connector as it is fitted with uh, a cap. This is just a ground thing. And two plugs. So this one might be for a power supply obviously given the size of the contacts. We have uh, apparently uh, two or three part constructions. We have a main uh, cover to the probably card schedule. We have a main unit here on the front panel which is secured by Allen screws so probably it will be able to split at this level. We have the remains here of uh, quality control. Final seal by uh, yes computing devices company limited quality department. But as you can see if it is in focus, by the way, it has already been opened. So I hope we will have everything inside. I will start by undoing this panel. So I am really curious to see what we have in this unit. It is something I have been watching on eBay for a long time, several years actually. And at least I found one at a reasonable price. The shipping was expensive by the way, but at least I got one. There are a few items like this I have been watching for very long and one at a time I get them. Okay. Okay, a nice uh, aluminium cover here. And here is what we have in this section, apparently uh, five circuit boards called the Serial IF, Discrete IP, Switch IF, Lamp Drivers and uh, Processor. Ok, with a strip of contacts here on the edge to, for test probably, we will see it uh, 
better when I remove boards and as you can see a big power supply unit so for this power supply I see uh, fast enough that uh, really like the ones in, uh, in other devices in particular uh, Vinten uh, uh, flare dispender no, it is not good so these fasteners here for uh, circuit boards are imperial they are uh, uh, three thirty two of an inch. So you really need the correct tool to undo such screws. By the way, I got this set on Banggood for uh, next to nothing, and they are the most uh, usual sizes. So at least if you tinker with uh, US made equipment or aircraft equipment, do you a favor of ordering at least this thing. It is the Brop Imperial Allen set. It is 5 or 8 euros, something like this. And really, it is the minimum thing to have. Okay, we can, I believe, try to wiggle it around and maybe extract this power supply unit. Here we are. Okay, quite serious thing. Then the circuit boards should be a lot easier. Yes, so I will remove each one of them and we will have a look at them if we are in focus. Is it possible, please? Thanks. Okay, okay. so usual. Uh, card edge, uh, industrial card edge connectors here, nothing fancy. Okay. Okay, so when we are done, here is what we have at the bottom. A big uh, aluminium plate, machine piece even. A very rusty uh, connector here. I am not sure what is going on, but I will probably do something before I uh, is it rust or is it dirty it is not easy to tell it is rust color definitely but it seems to be uh, coming away and the metal under it seems to be intact so I will uh, clean it we have here on the side a label it is uh, using front assembly Computing devices in Hastings, United Kingdom. Okay, so what do we have here? We will start with this power supply assembly. So it is written on the edge here, high voltage. But maybe it is because of the power input, not the power output. As you can see, we have apparently a free phase transformer, so it might be uh, fed from the main power bus on the aircraft. So 115 or uh, even 200 volts AC, 400 Hertz, free phase. Power supply module. Here you can see the machining, quite uh, amazing of this thing. We have uh, a bunch of uh, bridge rectifiers here. Actually, we have a three phase rectifier here, or the two uh, regular ones with only four diodes. We have what is apparently a big electrolytic capacitor with screw on terminals with this. Uh, contraption to secure it with zip ties not the best thing in uh, not bad but I should expect better in a so expensive aircraft equipment and here something weird I do not know if it, uh, it is a leak from the capacitor but the 
solder is all covered of white powder. We have apparently a few uh, power transistors and two circuit boards. This one is called the over voltage trip. The other one is covered with mainly resistors and two ICs. I will undo this first screw, so you will be able to check what the name is on this board. Okay, by the way, there is something weird and sticky in this device, you can see. Not sure if it is old oil or something like this. So, what do we have? We have the PSU board. Okay. LM139, LM124, Sphernis glass resistors, some capacitors, a bunch of uh, metal coated uh, precision resistors. Oh, we get to see the value of a capacitor here. Felsic. It is uh, written in French, it seems, by the way. Date code of 1973, maybe. I see a 73 here. But the other dead codes are 86, 85, quite weird. And by the way, it looks like the what seems to be a heat shrink around the capacitor is actually the capacitor wrapping because the value is written on it directly. Felsic by Sick Company. And you can see it is E I F A, so it is, uh, yes, it is French. Interesting. The other side of the rusty uh, or dirty connector here, which I will have to clean. And your uh, big, well, quite big, three phase transformer here. Okay, so it is all for this part. Next, the circuit boards. We will check them one at a time. So, this one is the serial IF, so apparently communication with the outside world. Our IF seems maybe interface, simply. Okay. Crystal oscillator, a lot of uh, XC 74s on the 40. XC series of uh, those circuits, dead codes of 87. And yes, as I said here, we have a header on the front with uh, contacts for uh, test purpose, probably. A nice uh, conformal coating, except on the side here. No budge. So, quite a well made thing. All the ICs are military grade in ceramic, of course. <coughs> okay. So it should be possible to reverse engineer this board with time, with a lot of time. So next one, the board number two, the card sketch is the discrete IP which means discrete inputs uh, a lot of uh, resistor networks LM139 so looks like we have analog inputs of, of us, some kind then uh, logic clips to uh, digitalize analog information maybe quite well. Maybe this is some kind of uh, early or uh, split in parts and an analog to digital converter stuff. Quite interesting. Also you can see again very clean work at least. No budge. Very well made. The next board is the uh, switch interface, so probably responsible to for switching the uh, 
Well, for the interface of a switch is in the unit, almost the same thing. In fact, we have the same resistor networks, the same uh, ICs here. Interesting. This here is a six pin device from a Texas instrument called X10. So some IC as the other ICs are X also. Where the number here is zoom for you if you want to research it but uh, Seems quite an obscure part. Okay, apart from this, here, same design. Clean again. Oh, we have one here also. Like this. Interesting. Then we are left with the lamp driver. So actually quite fancy for a lamp driver. I believe it is responsible for driving the lamps in the buttons I will show you just after. Uh, you can see some parts are unpopulated here. We have some super nice golden ceramic ICs here. I did research this uh, part number and you find nothing. But really a nice work and quite uh, seems quite uh, sophisticated for a long driver. In fact Yes, several parts are unpopulated. Interesting. Then we are left with the main unit. Main board, the processor board. With, as you can see, we have Zilog Z8400 ACMB. It is a military version of the Z80 processor. Companionship here. Uh, some RAM here probably and one EPROM or something else Atmel 8027C256 which seems to be mounted onto some kind of an heat sink and socketed so I am able to Remove it from the socket and read this EPROM as I now have a EPROM reader. It looks like it is glued in some way to this uh, aluminium block under it. Quite uh, weird. Yes, it is not moving at all. So it means to undo it, I should need to unscrew the aluminum block, but I will not be able to insert it anyways in my uh, EPROM reader unless I find uh, extenders for the legs. So maybe something I will do someday, but right now I do not think I have uh, correct uh, stuff for it. Quite uh, interesting concept to it think uh, a problem like this. Or maybe it is just for mechanical uh, securing, but you can do something else. If you can uh, secure a capacitor with three zip ties, you can secure an EPROM with one or two zip ties in the, this direction, for example. Quite weird. So we have the processor. Again, very nice work, you can see. So it should contain interesting stuff, but it will be difficult to extract, to unplug this EPROM, it seems. The core brand RAM here, it seems. Some peripheral chips. So really a bare processor board with minimum amount of parts, it seems. The legs are not gold, gold on the 
I see is here. Okay, so now time to crack open the main unit and see what we have. But first, I will show you how these buttons work. Actually, uh, they are backlit with little bulbs. And of course, as it is bulbs, you must be able to replace them. So you, have, you there is a little groove here which will allow to insert a tool and actually pull on the button, which will flip out of the way like this, but not uh, remove completely. And here you have access to your super tiny bulbs of a regular model. Uh, 307 regular aircraft uh, equipment bulb and of course if I shine a light now we can see the letters on this uh, button so apparently the lamp driver is just for the, this board this, uh, this lights interesting and to reinsert it you just press and it will lock in place. Okay, now I will undo the unend screws here and we will try to split the two parts. So it was actually more tedious than expected because I had to undo the uh, screws around the connectors because they are secured like this in the frame and uh, attached to the front part with uh, short cables. And as you can see, spare no expense here just for this grounding lug, four nuts. Quite a thick cover. Okay, so what do we have in here? We have a sandwich construction of uh, the front uh, panel, circuit board with apparently the drivers for the LCD displays, flat flex assembly here, interconnecting the buttons, this main structural aluminium frame. And the connectors with their short wires and a wall army of filter assemblies. So they are capacitive pass-through, as you can see. Apparently uh, silver coated. They are screwed in, you can see here, in the aluminium part. And they are soldered directly in the board behind it. The connectors are the crimp type, which are pain to work with if you do not have uh, correct tools. You need the very special tools in order to be able to do anything with it. You can see nice lacing here on this wire harness. And all the contacts are used except for one ear. So really a lot of wires going to this device. And you can see uh, this uh, structural board here 
is uh, secured by st with standoffs. So I will try to unscrew it in order to have a better access at the circuit under it. Okay, it will flip out of the way. You can see we have a quite nice flex rig reconstruction here connecting to all of these buttons. So I will surely not unsolder everything, but I want to check what we have as liquid crystal displays here so it means I need to undo everything all these screws uh, neck D7225J uh, drivers for the LCDs so I want to uh, check if there is a model number on the LCDs apparently there are zebra strips and check if I can order find a replacement one for the broken one. So, uh, thanks to the magic of the editing, in a few seconds all these screws will be removed. Okay, we are one billion screws later on the two billion washers later because each screw has two washers. And it looks like I am able to lift this whole unit. Yes. As you can see, we see very well now the broken LCD. We have a plastic plate here to try not to lose all the screws, by the way. Yes, uh, plastic plate, which is not broken, luckily enough. And I need to undo uh, two more standoffs here. Apparently, I want to check first the backlight we have behind these LCDs because we must have some kind of backlight. And if there is a reference number on the LCD, if it is regular part I could find eventually uh, is it coming off yes okay we have a super nice uh, machine aluminium frame here and we have our LCDs which are secured by zebra strips so I will pull the broken one obviously and no luck, no model number at all, or maybe it is behind this uh, reflective coating because it seems we have the backlight, it seems to be electroluminescent. Yes, uh, electroluminescent layer glued, like you had in some old Ericsson mobile phones, by the way. Electroluminescent film glued behind the LCD. And no luck because it will not come off at all. Yes, it is very hardly glued. Okay, I need little additional zebra strip here just for the uh, backlight. So we have a resist. I could try to power on those backlights, but I do not know the voltage. Usually they require quite a high voltage to work such ultra-innocent films. Quite where the zebra script assembly, here you can see with this red spacer. And it is also no luck. 
unless I find a replacement. Uh, so I can see we have, uh, will you see them? We can see the digits actually. They are alphanumerical, yes, like this. You can see them. A lot of uh, segments each time. Mounted with, uh, is it a driver board or is it uh, this wall LCD uh, wall board here? But it is completely glued, so I cannot do anything here. Sadly enough. So unless I find another uh, similar item where I could salvage one LCD, this one will remain broken. Okay, quite interesting construction at least, you can see. Well, you know what? In fact, it was not necessary really to undo all the screws, at least the ones uh, in the middle are just for securing the bezel here. Only the ones on the around are necessary to undo the whole thing. So good to know. So I will put this back together. What are the plans next? I do not know if I could try to power it on. Maybe try to figure out the DC buses on the power supply seems quite uh, complicated or uh, supply it directly with uh, free phase AC but uh, my free phase power supply will not uh, be high enough pro most probably so I do not know what I will do next uh, one other look at the uh, flat flex assembly here with uh, buttons which are soldered in place. You can see uh, very nice uh, oh, uh, very nice quality. Little potentiometer here for uh, adjusting the backlight, most probably. All the solders here to the uh, capacitive pass through and to the card connectors. Okay, and you can see by the way the number of uh, tracks going to this uh, LCD display is quite uh, low. We have uh, 20 tracks or something like this. Not a lot. Interesting. But uh, it is just sad for the broken LCD. So I will put this uh, back together, or at least I will try. So. Thanks for watching, bye bye.